Hello folks, this is Fluorescent FIFA, and I'm finally here with an actual tutorial of sorts. Sorry it's taken so long, but it's here now. Now, I should say this tutorial, in case you've come across this by accident, this tutorial is intended entirely for people using manual controls. If you do not know what manual controls are, check out the links in the description, they will explain it all. So, this tutorial is going to be about how to get the power right on your passes, your crosses, your shots. I'm not going to go into too many specifics, but I'm just going to go over some things which can affect the power in your pass, certain things you need to consider when powering your pass up. So let's get to it. So one thing you might notice if you use assisted, when you look in the bottom left hand corner, whenever you play a pass you might notice there's a little indicator on your power bar. What that basically demonstrates, I think, is the actual amount of power that's been applied. You can see the power bar differs slightly from the indicator in these. Uh, so I think that's what happens on assisted. On manual, that isn't there. Now it's important to remember that when you play on manual, you don't have to get your pass power absolutely perfect to the millimeter on the power bar every single time. There is a little bit of a margin for error. You can probably be about half a bar out either way, maybe slightly more in certain situations. If you hit a pass a little bit soft when it's going to a player's feet, he'll run towards the ball and get it. It doesn't instantly mean that it's going to be a rubbish pass. Similarly, if, if you put a little bit more power than you intended, it just might mean that the player's first touch might be a little bit heavier if it's to his feet. It's not like the end of the world, so you don't have to be super precise. But the, the kind of problem with doing a tutorial on this is that effectively what I'm being asked to do is tell you exactly how long, or, or exactly how to hold the button for a given length of time and I don't really think I can do that uh, ultimately as much as I hate to say it, it is just about practice you just have to get a sense for how long you have to hold the button for in certain situations but what I can do is give you some advice about certain things you might need to consider when powering your passes which maybe you hadn't thought of especially if you're someone who's moving over from assisted to manual so that's what I'm gonna do so in this video I'm gonna go over some things to do with uh, what you need to consider when powering up a pass, the ways in which things like the weather can affect your passes, and also something to do with the speed at which you're moving can affect your passes as well. And I'm also going to go over a couple of little bugs which people who have played manual a bit will be aware of, people newly converting might not be aware of. It's something you need to know about when you're playing on manual passing. So I will go over those, and uh, we will start from the beginning and we will start with uh, just some things you need to consider when powering up a pass. Okay, so the first piece of advice I'm going to give is that you basically, when you're trying to do a long range pass or when you're trying to do something which involves you putting a lot of power on the ball, you need to think about it and make sure you get started powering it up a little bit quicker than you might be used to if you play on assisted. If you want to play a really full uh, long range pass and you want the power bar to be full, because that's the amount of power you need, you're going to have to start powering it up a little bit earlier than you normally would, because it takes quite a while for the bar to fill all the way up. So if you try and do it too late, you might get tackled, it might be much easier to intercept. That's something you need to remember to do when you're doing a, a really long-range pass, or if you're doing quite a powerful shot, sometimes you might need to start pressing the shoot button a bit sooner than you normally would, because otherwise what's going to happen is that it's going to take too long to power up, you might get tackled, it might get blocked, you might lose the opportunity you've got. That's something you need to remember, so you can do this by pushing it away from you, you can do this by making sure that when you play a pass you deliberately um, start powering it up the moment you've taken the touch before you're going to pass the ball, which is what I'm trying to demonstrate here. So you can that way you can make sure that the power is going to be full by the time he gets ready to kick the ball. So that's the first piece of advice you need to remember when powering up your pass. So tip number two is to do with the weather. One thing that you again might not have considered if you play using assisted is the actual effect that the weather has on the power of your passes. When you play on manual, the way it works is that basically the amount of power you put on it is the amount of power it would travel with in the dry. So if you played, let's say, a pass which had two bars of power on it on manual in the dry, it might go, let's just say for the sake of argument, 20 yards. If you play in the rain and play a pass which has two bars of power on it, it will probably go about 10 to 15 yards. 
the rain will slow it down, the, the moisture on the grass is modelled so that it will slow the ball down. So what you need to consider is that you need to put more power on your passes when you're in the rain for them to travel the same distance as they would in the dry. So this kind of ties into tip number one. When you're playing in the rain, you need to make sure that you power up just that little bit earlier so that you can get the power you need on your passes, especially ground passes where they really do slow down in the rain. So that's something you need to consider. However, what you can do is once you've got the hang of it, you can use it to your advantage. If I give you a quick demonstration here, this is a game played in the rain, and what I do is I play a through ball which would only work in the rain. I deliberately put plenty of power on it, but I know it will slow down in the rain so that uh, my player can run onto it and have a chance on goal and obviously I managed to score and another example here where I've deliberately put plenty of power on the pass you can see from the power bar but it slowed up so much in the rain that I'm able to go through on goal and I managed to chip this one over the goalkeeper but it's something else to consider that when you're when you're playing in different weather conditions that the amount of power you put on your pass has to vary which is something that might be new if you're new to manual or something you might just not have realized before and the third tip that I'm going to give is to do with movement. The speed at which you're moving has a very slight effect on how much power each of your passes or shots will get. It affects shots the most, but I think it has a very slight effect on passes. I tested this out, and it seems that if you're stood still and you try to play a pass which goes with, say, two bars of power, it will go maybe a very slightly shorter distance than one than if you were moving, but the difference with passing is pretty negligible. But with shots, however, I'll give you an example here. If you stand still and try and shoot, even if you put the power bar full, it you can see it doesn't really go with any power at all. Even if you are going at a speed where you're using precision dribbling, which is by holding LB, and you try a shot, it doesn't matter if you put loads of power on it, it doesn't really go very far whatsoever. So what you need to consider is that in an ideal world, especially if you're playing a sort of really long-range pass, make sure that you're moving, or long-range shot, make sure that you're moving at a decent speed. Don't be going incredibly slowly. Moving with the uh, LT held, which is the slow dribble, that should be fine, but precision dribbling with LB will probably make your shots be complete rubbish. So again, just make sure that you're moving at a decent speed when you try and do everything, um, especially shots, because you'll find it much easier to get more distance on your passes. If you want to do a really short range pass or shot, then it doesn't matter so much, but if you're doing something from any sort of mid to long distance, you need to make sure that you're moving at a half decent speed. And now the last thing I'm going to mention in this video is a couple of uh, little bugs. And these are very definitely bugs. It's something that EA unfortunately haven't fixed. They're not too bad, but you need to be aware of them, I think, if you're new to manual and you suddenly wonder why on earth has this happened. The first bug is uh, to do with first time passing. Very occasionally when you play a ball to a player and then you want to pass it first time, if you try and do a really short range pass, so let's say you've tried to maybe do sort of a five yard pass, for some strange reason the game might suddenly decide that it's going to play a pass about 40 yards instead of five. Uh, that is just an unfortunate, very slight bug. It doesn't happen all that often, but it does happen occasionally. I think it's even worse when you've uh, played a through ball through the air or a lob ball through the air and you try to do it then. I think that's when it's slightly worse. Uh, there's not a lot I, of advice I can really give. Just I, I don't, you know, I can't really say avoid ever doing first-time passes to avoid it. It's not a horrendous bug. It doesn't happen too often. It's not sort of like every time you try and do a first-time pass that this happens because that's definitely not the case. But it just does happen very occasionally. It's something you need to be aware of. But there's not a lot you can do about that one. The other one to do with powering up uh, is chipped through balls. When you try and do a really, really short range chip through ball, so when you are, say, putting the, the power bar maybe one bar or less, uh, occasionally what can happen is that the chip through ball will go a long way again. This doesn't necessarily have to be first time. Uh, this is a problem which uh, I know is a bit of a uh, hindrance for quite a few people because they like to play very little chip through balls over the top and then they end up going about 20, 30 yards instead. Uh, there's an example I'm just going to give here. Just when I was doing uh, some of the demonstrations, it happened to me. Uh, the best way to get around this, I find, is to do a lobbed pass instead of a chip through pass. So chip through pass is LB and Y. A lob pass is just using X. Whilst the X pass doesn't go as high as a chip through ball, it still achieves roughly the same thing. And for some reason, the lobbed pass button doesn't have that bug whatsoever. So the best way to counter that is when you're doing really, really short range ones, say 10 yard ones, to use cross. Uh, that being said, 
chip through balls over that distance do work some of the time and you can play some really nice little chip through balls which lead to goals but ideally I think it's best to use lob pass for that just to avoid that problem ever happening. So those are a few tips, a few things for you to consider. Like I say, it's pretty difficult for me to teach you how long to hold a button for. I can't really do that. If you play offline, apparently you can adjust the sliders so that if you prefer maybe having to hold things a bit longer or not having to hold things for as long, then you can do that if you play offline, I think. But that certainly, to my knowledge, doesn't apply online. And like I say, it is just about practice in terms of the basics of getting the hang of how to just hold the button for the right length of time but it shouldn't take that long I think powering up is one of the easier things to do one of the harder things to do is aiming and I think that is the tutorial that you guys are really waiting for so that is going to be the next one I'm going to go over some of the basics of how to aim I'm not going to go into specifically how to aim absolutely everything but I'm going to give a couple of pieces of advice in that next one which I think should be uh, helpful to people, especially people who are really new to manual. Some of the pieces of advice might be a bit obvious to people who really uh, have played manual a bit, but hopefully they'll be useful. With regard to this video, uh, hopefully uh, you guys found it useful, hopefully it was informative. Uh, if you can let me know what you think in the comments, if you can click like if you found it useful and enjoyed it, that would be great. Subscribe if you uh, aren't already and you want to see more tutorials, because there will be more on the way. I'm going to make that one of my focuses from now on. And in the meantime, play manual.